This week's video is a little different. It's a vlog of me going to San Antonio and Austin, Texas, where myself and two other OBGYNs as part of our new nonprofit, Obstetricians for Reproductive Justice, shine a light on what's happening in Texas right now, especially to one couple who had a horrific experience after not getting the care they needed. It's gonna be a tough watch, but I really encourage you to do it. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author and educator, and welcome to my YouTube channel where I'm the health class you wish you had in high school. Go ahead and subscribe, click the buttons, click the bells, all the things to make sure you never miss an upload. What I'm about to show you is a trip I took to San Antonio and Austin, Texas in September. I was going there for a conference and what I'm posting here has nothing to do with this conference or is not at all affiliated with it. But as part of this trip, myself and two other OBGYNs who were founding a nonprofit, we decided to make this our first trip under the mission of that nonprofit. So I'm sharing with you the vlog from that trip. We did a lot in a very short amount of time. And what you're seeing is in real time what we're doing, the things that we're speaking up against, the people whose platforms were we're using our platforms to give them a place to speak. And I really hope that you will watch it. And if you don't agree with abortion, I really hope that you watch this. I really, I made this video for you, for people who don't understand why abortion is really important. And I don't want you to take my word for it, but take the word for it of the people who we encounter. So um, I hope you enjoy watching this or at the very least can understand and can see why, why this matters. It's about 5.15 in the morning and my family's sleeping, hence why I'm being so quiet. Um, but I thought we should do a vlog and I'm heading to the airport. So I'm gonna tell you the story of where I'm going and why and we're gonna have some fun. airport in Portland, Oregon, and I am flying to San Antonio, Texas. I have a meeting with the Society of OBGYN Hospitals. It's our annual clinical meeting. I'm um, super excited. I'm helping to run some of the simulations. I'm giving a talk. I'm on the board. I get to connect with people, um, learn. It's, it's awesome. But as you know, Texas. And that is why I'm wearing my little Aiden a bit abortion shirt. I do like to wear appropriate gear when I travel. I'll put the link down below to get it. So I think I should tell you about the nonprofit I'm founding, I'm co-founding, because our first shenanigans are happening during this trip. So myself, Dr. Heather Irbunda, who's an OBGYN in the Bronx, and Dr. Jen Conti, who's a family planning specialist in California, the three of us got together connected after the fall of Roe, feeling like we had to do something. And we are in positions of power where we can in the states of Oregon, Texas, or excuse me, I wish, Oregon, New York, and California. And so we formed, we're forming this 501c3. We have done all the planning. We have a lot of help from amazing people, but this is just all in our free time. And the goal of this organization is to help uplift and tell the stories of patients and providers who are experiencing harm in a post row world, to amplify, to educate, and overall to fight for reproductive justice, which is by definition, the ability for somebody to decide if, when, and how they want to grow their families or not. And we know that there are huge disparities in this country and abortion bans only make it worse. So our first trip is to Texas. <laughs> so we didn't pick an easy spot, um, but we're gonna go there. We're gonna do some filming. We are gonna bring some resources. We're gonna bring some good trouble because you know that's how I roll. And so I'm heading out there today and I've been doing a ton of work and I'm ready to see this thing through. So here we go. Ugh. Okay. So here's the, here's the story. I was supposed to be here a long time ago, but there were delayed flights, rebooking. I almost missed my connecting flight in Dallas. I'm here in San Antonio. I am going to order some room service and go right to bed because the work starts tomorrow. Here's all my supplies. This is totally normal to have in a hotel, right? We've got all our staplers so we can put 
our posters up, oodles and oodles of things that we're going to be putting out and about. These are stickers from Plancy Pills, which are phenomenal. Um, you can stick these and put these QR codes anywhere. We've got markers. Of course, we've got Plan B because why would we go anywhere? We've got cards for three for freedom. We've got some abortion handouts. We've got all of our tech stuff. We've got this. Now, this is something amazing that I just love. Uh, it's a handbag that goes with a cape that I'm wearing that my friend sewed for me. It's in here um, to wear with a formal dress that I'm wearing for an auction. And then, of course, we've got extra shirts because all my friends need their swag. All right, I just got back from the simulation center where we did our little run-through stuff. And now... I'm gonna head out and get some lunch and I've got whoop, some stickers that I'm gonna be passing out or well, maybe just discreetly putting in places. Let's see, what else do I have? We've got business cards for three for freedom and I've got a bunch of other fantastic stickers. Let's see what's in this pocket. Oh yeah, plan C. So I'm gonna go out and do some good. I'm about to meet Jen Conti for the first time. Oh, fabulous. Because <laughs> I could never just sit down and be like, I'm going to go sit on the back patio after my kids are in bed and read a book. I'd be like, I'm going to go sit on the back patio and I'm going to look into the laws about this. And then I'm going to be like, how can I present this message in a way? And who do I need to email? And, and like all of this stuff that we've done, like it has been amazing. It is also a crap ton of work. It's exhausting. We are doing things yeah. that, and we're also doctoring right. and we're parenting right. And we're trying to respond, and you can't just not respond to the messages no. of people who are like, I, I'm having an abortion and I'm I'm scared, what do I do? I can't just not no. write back to that. Like, But I think that's what's, like, getting at this, like, feeling of, like, anxiety and, and mm -hmm. everything else. It's like, like you said, like, the job mm -hmm. doesn't stop, mothering mm -hmm. doesn't stop, mm -hmm. and I'm feeling, like, really guilty because, like, you know, mm -hmm. despite this, despite my mind like reeling and being like I'm not doing enough my husband put it in perspective he's like never again will there be a summer that happened after Roe fell you don't get a summer this summer and we'll make it up to you at some point but don't expect this to be normal and I just felt really sad like I'm really sad that it's September like I was like my kids are back in school and that's great but Where I feel like I didn't get that break that recharge yeah. that we often get but I think that doing yeah, this right. stuff is hard but it's also going to be therapeutic to see the fruits of what we're doing just like giving our patients and people the chance who are living this every day to have the chance to tell their story. Yeah, but, no, I mean, I think... But it's so fucking hard. When we finally heard from Amanda, mm -hmm. and she told... Like, that's oh, where yeah. I was like, yes, this is needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is needed. And also, like, for her, for people's healings, healing yeah. that are going to participate, too, because... Yeah. I mean, I, she said this. She said, like, I, I need an outlet. Like, yeah. she wanted to tell her story. And so... There's a lot of people feel safer yeah. telling doctors yes. too, right? Oh yeah, than they, just a reporter on right. 2020 because right. they know that we have their best right. interests. They understand that we're not going to, you know, divulge something that's that they say no. Yeah. Um, I don't want to talk about it, even if mm -hmm. they said it and they want to go back or, right. um, or just they know that we know what it's like to be right. in the room, right, with them. And I think that I mean I don't know. We're going to go out tonight, tomorrow. I don't know what kind of people we're going to encounter. Like it's a little stressful. But it's Simon. also... Simon was like, don't get arrested. I need you. I'm like, oh, well, I need to be at work on Monday. So I know, exactly. I'm going to do the best I can. Um, but I think there's a lot of people here, too, in Texas and other places who are just as angry. And when they see us, they're like, okay, they haven't forgotten about us. Or I can be pissed off, too, and I can stand up because they're doing it. All right, where are we going? We're going to the Crisis Pregnancy Center in San Antonio. Yep, it is, um, what was it called? A choice for a women. Women's choice, a woman's something. It's interesting body. that the word choice yeah, is in choice. the title because these centers, the reason we're going to them 
is because they coerce you. They try to make you feel guilty. They try to make you think you have a choice. And, and they've got an agenda. Yes. Their, their information is totally biased. Um, so we're going to go and we're going to do some filming and then we're going to maybe just leave them some handouts. Yeah, just get some information. I think yeah. they're missing some education. We've got it. We've got yeah. it in our bag. We're ready. We've got our awesome, you know, we've got our shirts, we've got our whole thing, we've got our stickers for voting. So we'll see you there. Okay, so we're walking up to a crisis pregnancy center, and the best part is that Jen, Dr. Conti, is actively on the phone trying to help somebody coordinate their medically indicated abortion procedure back where she works. So as you can see, even when we're busy advocating, she's still working hard because this is what doctors do. So this is one of our first places that we're stopping in San Antonio. This is a crisis pregnancy center, which is really a euphemism for a place where they want to talk you out of having an abortion. And I'm all for you making an informed choice. And if you end up thinking you wanted an abortion and then you choose not to have one, by all means, that's totally okay. But I don't want you to make these decisions based on the fake information that these people will give you. They lie. They tell you false things about abortions. They tell you false side effects. They say they're going to help you. I have stories of people who say that they weren't allowed to leave until they called the cops. And on that moment, the people in the crisis pregnancy center let them go because they are so about guilting you into wanting to stay pregnant, being forced to see ultrasounds, that kind of thing. We're not standing for it. And that's why Obstetricians for Reproductive Justice is here. And we're going to start doing the work to make sure that the people in Texas know that they've not been forgotten, as well as in other states where these bans are in place. And these sorts of centers are filling in the gaps and they shouldn't be. I think, I don't know, because I mean, there's like a whole, if you call yourself a clinic, there's a whole... Uh-huh. Like, yeah. But if they, you just buy two houses next to each other. Apparently. Like apparently you can just buy two houses. So this one looks like it's called the Allied Woman Center. Let's see what we've got. Literally just a house. Literally just a house. It's across the street from a Wendy's. for women. think otherwise choice Preg free pregnancy testing it all seems like they're willing to help people but this is not a real clinic these clinics are very rarely slash never staffed by actual medical professionals or people who know what they're talking about mm -hmm. um, and they're often backed by a lot of religious organizations that have an ulterior motive so you get inside and their goal is to keep you inside get an ultrasound done make sure that you can see the fetus make sure that you connect with it and you feel guilty for wanting an abortion um, and provide very, very biased counseling. It's not about determining whether or not you're at the right place and you, you know, are exercising your free choice. This is about making you feel guilty for wanting an abortion or for thinking about any other option besides parenting. What's the story simple. of somebody you heard who went to one of these centers? Oh my God, so many, so many. Um, I can't tell you how many people I've seen who showed up for care and who are not the gestational age or who are not as far along pregnant as they thought they were because they first stopped by one of these places and they intentionally lied and told them that they were earlier on or later on than they actually were hoping that you know with those respective options they were too late and so they would stop trying to get an abortion or had all the time in the world and had more time to think about it while time went by so uh, I can't even count how many times people have come to me with you know wasted weeks first just being misled by these places. The problem with these clinics is that they're rooted in lies. They're rooted in false hope. They will tell you that they'll be here for you to help you raise your baby. They may give you some resources, which is great, but so do traditional clinics. The other thing is that they're rooted in misinformation. So they will tell patients that abortions are linked with breast cancer, that having an abortion means you're more likely to have mental health concerns and mental health issues after an abortion when the studies have actually shown it's the opposite. 
that if you wanted an abortion and you were turned away from it, hence the turn away study that looked at this, that those people are more likely to have issues with anxiety, depression, they're more likely to stay in poverty. Their children, those who that they were not prepared to raise, are more likely to have issues with development in school and their own mental health issues. These guys won't tell you that. They'll tell you lies, they'll make you feel guilty, and they will never actually support a choice, whatever your choice is that you make, because they only want you to have one choice, and that's forced pregnancy and forced birth. And we are here to speak up and call this out because lots of people don't know that crisis pregnancy centers are based in lies. So the other thing that you'll see crisis pregnancy centers doing a lot is positioning themselves strategically right next to actual medical facilities. So this one here is right next to this, what looks like a mall almost called Health Texas. Pretty large primary care doctor's facility as they've labeled themselves there. And that looks legit. But they put themselves near these places too so that you associate them with a real clinic and you think that they're doing real medical care here when the truth is they're doing the exact opposite. You'll often see them next to Planned Parenthoods and other clinics like that. First tweet. Yesterday we visited a crisis pregnancy center and we walked the river walk and projected some DMs to show real harm of abortion, um, which people were very interested in reading. Today we are going to meet with City Council Representative Terry Castillo, who was responsible for putting forward the resolution that was passed that said that um, no city resources here in San Antonio should go towards the prosecuting of pregnant people. And we love her for that. And we want to talk to her about that. And then later we're going to film a very, very emotional story about a patient who was harmed when she did not get the care she needed for her abortion and she almost died. And this was maybe just two weeks ago. So we're talking to her and her husband to help her share her story that she wants to get out there because she's pissed as she should be. So I'm um, a little tired. I got my coffee mug. I'm here with my girls and we're going to do this. So stay tuned. We're ready. So we're here with Terry Castillo, who is the representative of San Antonio City Council District 5, who we all wanted to meet with because she just helped put forward and pass a resolution that says that no city dollars for people who are on government health insurance here, that their information can be given to the police um, and that they will not use any of those funds to prosecute pregnant people. So we would just love to hear why you and why this issue. It's absolutely when um, the, when we had the overturning of Roe this week, we saw thousands of San Antonio residents take to the street to express their disconcern, their, their concern with the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And with that, we had a lot of calls coming from community that were demanding that we protect San Antonio women yeah. who are seeking access to health care, right? Yeah. And that means safe access to abortion as well. Yeah. Um, so what we did is we put forth a resolution that directs our city manager to not use any city funds or resources to track or criminalize women uh, who have uh, who are seeking or have had an abortion. So what that means is we're not going to see the creation of a PD unit to go out and track women, uh, to turn them in and prosecute them. 
uh, at the same time, we're also directing our city's um, city manager um, with the next upcoming legislative agenda to prioritize reproductive health care, uh, meaning, right, to, to challenge any um, anti-abortion bills coming forward or anything to attack municipalities for protecting women. Awesome. We are so thankful that you're doing this. So we are in a house of a lovely uh, couple who, um, who had a bad outcome after a bag of water broke at 18 weeks and the doctors in Texas here couldn't do anything and sent her home and because the fetus had a heartbeat, she ended up returning in sepsis and almost died and they're sharing their story with us today. And it's gonna be a lot, but these stories need to be told. their baby and this because of laws in Texas she ended up in the ICU and because that's, with our that's production the team it was so gut-wrenching oh, there were tears from everybody um, it's I'll not share when the story job, comes out but I just want you to know that people are dying people will die and um, as a physician as OBGYNs hearing these stories it's traumatic for everybody so we're gonna go get some lunch and then we're gonna continue filming for some other things. Yeah. Hey ladies, what's going on? Deep. We got a deep. We're filming in the swamp. We got a deep. <laughs> get it in all your nooks and crannies. Nooks and crannies. We hope it you ends. We know how to get it in there. until every single citizen of the great state of Texas reproductive health care. Oh, I got a message for Greg, hang on. Where the woman almost died because of the laws in your state where she couldn't get the care she needed and she was sent home and was told to come back when she was almost dead and sick enough to get health care. How do you sleep at night? We took an oath to help people. Let us do our jobs. Why don't you do your fucking job? been a day. So it's the end of the day. We spent our day filming um, with the city councilwoman, with um, a pretty amazing couple in Texas sharing their story. Um, then we went to the Austin Capitol and elsewhere. And I mean, when you watch it, you see there's definitely moments where we're having a good time together, myself and Heather and Jen, and we're, we're doing this and we're engaged and there's times where we're even laughing and we seem normal but um I am so drained from today and not just from today but from carrying these stories you don't meet with somebody who almost died because they didn't get the health care they needed for a pregnancy that was very wanted and I don't want to make it sound like those abortions are somehow like okay and other ones aren't you don't need a qualification to have your abortion in this kind of situation though, it's just so heartbreaking to see a shell of two people in front of you who are two weeks out from their trauma. A husband watching his wife, he wasn't sure if he was gonna bring her home. To see them break down and they said that they were thankful that they could tell their story with us because they did it in the name of their child that they lost. They wanted to 
be part of the solution to make a different world where hopefully other people don't have to suffer this loss where this doesn't happen to other people. But to know that in there, telling their story, it's just so much trauma. I beg you, if you are somebody who celebrates the fact that abortion is banned in, in many states and continues to be legislated away, I beg you to understand the harm and that I'm not here to convince you to agree with abortion. I'm here to ask you to keep government coercion and control out of other people's lives. Because until it affects you or until you're like us and you see what these people go through, they're not going to ever be okay again 100%. And it's heartbreaking to see this. And tomorrow, I, um, I got to put on my different hat. In about eight hours, I have to get up and I have to go help lead obstetric simulations where, again, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for a conference that has nothing to do with the stuff we've done today, but to be better physicians. And we added a simulation this year to help doctors practice how to treat septic abortions people who come in just like this woman did, almost dead, because we know we're going to see more of them come through our doors because of these laws. And as a OBGYN, as a physician, to know that this is happening, this didn't have to happen, it really fucks with your brain. And there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of trauma in our community, as if we weren't already traumatized by COVID and whatever. And so tomorrow I got to turn it on, be there, be ready to help teach people and smile and not, how could I not have what happened today be in my mind? Um, but what I'm going through is nothing compared to what they're going through and what other people are going through right now. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go to bed and try to get some sleep and wake up and start fresh in the morning. So that was a lot. And I had all the intentions of filming the rest of my conference, doing a wrap up, and I think you can tell that by the end of, of these two days that I was spent, I was emotionally drained. I was just exhausted. It is really hard to go from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. in a single day filming and not just filming like fun stuff, but taking in and absorbing people's most horrific moments, putting yourself out there, knowing that you're doing something in an area that doesn't agree with what you do as a physician and as a person. Um, it was a lot. And so I just said, you know what, I'm done filming and I'll, I'll get to this later. And a few weeks went by and I said, I gotta, I gotta finish up this video and get it out there. Um, the actual video, the production content that we made from this will be coming out very soon. In fact, by the time I post this, it may, it may already be out, but when it does, I will link it in the show notes below. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts and I would love for those people who are in these states who were having these same access issues who are suffering or for providers who know that their patients aren't getting what they need and they're getting very sick, um, that you're not alone and that we will continue to speak up and to fight out. And as always, references and resources in my show notes. Thank you so much for taking that journey with me and know that this was just the first of many. And until next time, stay safe out there, my friends.